Okay. So I've started recording. And so I just, first of all, welcome and thank you all so much for being here. And tonight, what I'm going to share with you guys, I've had so many people ask me different questions about the malas that I've been making. And so I'm just going to share with everybody tonight basic answers to a lot of questions that I've gotten. What is a mala? Um, how do I use my mala? How do I pick the stones for my mala? Kelly, I love that you've come adorned with your mala. And then the last question, and Carmen, I love it. It totally mixed in with your blue shirt. <laughs> um, and then the last question is, how do I wear my mala? So I'm going to give you guys a couple of different options, and then I'll just show you typically what, what I do. And obviously, you can wear it however you want. So those are the four things that I'm going to kind of answer for you guys tonight and just share my information that I have about all of that. And then um, I'll keep you guys muted during all of that. If anybody has anything that they want to say, please feel free to type it into the chat. And then when I'm finished, I'm probably going to take between 25 and 30 minutes to answer all of that. And then I will open it up. And if you guys have any questions, you can ask me your questions and I'll answer them. Um, and then that'll be that. So getting started with the first question, what is a mala? So it's a set of beads, they're always 108, a traditional mala is always 108 beads. And the 108 number is very significant in the history of um, Tibet. And so originally when they first came up with the mala beads, they decided on 108 beads for the traditional mala and it had to do with the distances between the sun and the moon and also the various um, planets around planet Earth. And so it's very, very interesting. And I wish that I was better with numbers and really understanding all of that because then I could really like wow you guys with all of that information. But if you're like me, I kind of get lost in the sauce and I'm like, wait, this times what is that, and this divided by that is what? So it, it all had to do with the distances between the various components that make up our planet. And so that is how they settled on 108 beads. And so they're very, the traditional malas all contain 108 beads, and then they also all contain a guru bead and then your tassel. And, um, you know, I've had some people ask me if the mala beads represent a religion. And they're definitely, you know, along the lines of Tibetan Buddhism, of course. And for me, it's not so much about a religious symbol. And it's not even a religious symbol within, within the Tibetan history. It's more about spirituality. And it's more, they're more used for people to grow individually and for people to develop this self-awareness and this sense of self-awareness and to provide people a space to allow themselves to really go within and to really connect more with themselves. So for me, whenever I bump up against somebody who is like, yeah, I don't, I stay away from that because I'm not into that religion and I don't want to be associated with the religion, you know, obviously to each their own and everybody gets to decide what they like and don't like. And for me, the way I view the mala, I don't, I don't view it as attached to any specific religion. And, and I guess I view it that way because I'm not attached to any specific religion. To me, the mala is really more representative of spirituality and allowing yourself, myself, to grow within my own spirituality and allowing myself time and space 
to really go, go within myself and to connect more with me. And so however you want to see the mala, really, again, there, in my opinion, there really is no wrong answer. It really is however you want to see your mala. It can represent to you whatever it is that you feel called for it to represent. And also, when going back to the number 108, um, and I'm not going to get into this tonight because I could really go on about the significance of the number 108, and we could be here all night just talking about that. But there's so many other things in the world that are representative of this 108 number. Um, prayer beads, a rosary, a traditional rosary has 108 beads on it. A baseball has 108 stitches in the baseball. And those are just a couple of examples. There are a lot of examples where things that are, we are surrounded with daily that are representative of this number 108. And then the numbers one, zero, and eight that individually are all very representative of other significances and then combined together, they add up to the number nine, which also has another significance. I'm not gonna explain all of that tonight because again, <laughs> we would be here for a while. So I'm going to do that on a different workshop and really kind of dissecting the numbers and really explaining what they all mean and, and where that all comes from. Um, so leading that into what do I do with my mala and how do I use it? So there are a couple of different things that you can do with your mala. Obviously, you can wear it as a beautiful piece of jewelry on your body. I have one on as a necklace that you, I don't know if you guys can see it. And then I also have another one on as a bracelet that I pretty much wear every day. Um, so I wear mine all of the time. And I also use it during meditation. And I also use it to breathe if I'm feeling particularly anxious about something or, you know, something's really stressing me out and I'm like, oh, I need to calm myself down. I will use my mala and just sit and breathe. And there's a, there's a very special way that you hold your mala when you're using it for that purpose. And I'll just kind of show you guys, you want the the guru bead and the tassel to be facing out. And then you just start, if you guys can see that, you just start at the top bead next to the guru bead. And you just take a really deep inhale and a really deep exhale for each bead. And so you just, you, you land on one bead and then you kind of almost flick it with your thumb and you come to the next bead. And then after you've taken in that deep breath and let it out, then you do the same thing. And you just keep moving around your entire mala until you land back at the guru bead. Now in tradition, you do not want to go over the guru bead. You want to start over and you want to go backwards then with your mala so that you don't pass over the guru bead. Um, and I'm going to do a different workshop on the significance of the guru bead and explain more of that. As I was writing the list of the things that I wanted to share with you guys, like we could be on here for like five hours. <laughs> so I had to pick and choose what I wanted to talk about today. Um, so you can do what I just shared with you. And sometimes it's easier for people to hold the model like this over their index finger. In true tradition, you actually want to not hold it over your index finger because your index finger is representative of your ego. And you don't want your ego to be involved in your meditative or your breathing practice. So the traditional way to do it, to hold it, is to do what I said and then hold it above your ring finger. For me, that's really uncomfortable because I have to like, concentrate way too much to like not get my other limbs and, and stuck and whatever so it's <laughs> it seems very cumbersome for me to do that 
Um, so sometimes I will just put it on the edge of my second finger and use it that way. Sometimes I will just use it and drape it over my index finger because it's easier that way and it's less cumbersome. And I don't have to focus so much on that. I can just really focus on my breathing or on my meditation. So you can use it during meditation. You can use it to breathe. And just going around, even if you just went around the mala one time and did 108 breaths, it's incredibly relaxing for your entire body to do that. Another way that you can use it is for um, mantras. A huge thing in the Tibetan culture is to use it, use it to chant and do a mantra. And depending on what lineage you follow, there's typically traditional chants or mantras that you would say. For me, what I choose to do is pick a word. You know, I, I have written a lot of affirmations. And so if, if there's a particular issue that I'm struggling with or there's something that I really want to focus on, then I'll pick one word that feels really inspiring to me or really empowering to me. And I'll go around my mala and just for each bead, I'll take in a, a deep breath, inhale, and a deep breath, exhale. And as I'm doing that, I will say the word to myself. And so I just keep doing that for the 108 beads. And it just really, it's really meant to, for, for yourself, for your own body, to really empower that word, that affirmation that you've chosen to say to yourself. So how do you use your mala? You can wear it as beautiful jewelry. You can use it to meditate. You can use it to breathe. You can use it to say affirmations. And also, I just learned this from my roommate recently. We were having a conversation, and she's actually been over to India um, she has been studying yoga for, I think, 20 years or 21 years. And she was sharing with me that because malas pick up, you know, it's all energy, right? We're energy, the mala's energy, the beads are energy. So when you wear your mala, your mala is being infused with your energy. But when you're out in the world, it's also picking up on other people's energy as well. And so she had shared with me that. When you use a mala as jewelry and you're wearing it, it's really important to clear your mala, which in my next online workshop, I'm going to be talking about how to set your intentions and how to clear your mala. So it's really important to do that as often as every month with the full moon. And it's really important that if you want to use it for meditation, your meditation or your breathing practice, that you actually have a separate mala that you specifically use only for your meditation and breathing practice and that you keep it inside of a special um, holder, inside of a special bag or a special holder and that that mala is your sacred tool to breathing and meditating. It's only being infused with your energy. It's only being infused with your mantras and your affirmation and whatever you're putting into it. And it's being kept in a safe space within your presence. And it's not, it's protected from anybody else's outside energy because the only person who is touching it and, and who is in the presence of it is you. And so, and I didn't know that. I was like, wow, thank you. And then, of course, she handed me like five books. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be able to read all of these by Wednesday, but I'm definitely going to read them. So it was really, really amazing that 
that she shared that with me because I was like, wow, I didn't even consider that. I didn't even think about that. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. And like I said, my next, I'm going to do another online workshop on July 26th. And I'm going to share with everybody in that workshop how to set your intention with your mala and how to clear your mala. So if you are using your mala to wear and for your meditation and breathing practice, I'll share with you how to clear it so you can get anybody else's energy out of your mala every month. Um, so those are the ways that you will use your mala. Now, how do you pick the stones for your mala? So for me, I have a couple of different ways, a couple of different options. First, I say go with stones that you love. Go with stones that you are drawn to. If you're drawn to a particular stone, there's a reason why you're being drawn to that stone. Maybe you're being drawn to it because you love those colors or that color. Maybe you're being drawn to it because there's something going on within you. Your energy is drawing you to the energy of what this stone represents and what this stone can offer to your being, to your body. And there, so you can't really go wrong with that. If you're feeling called to a particular stone, if you love certain stones or the looks of them or they're beautiful, there's a reason for that. Also, if you feel draw, just drawn to the colors, you know, maybe you're, you haven't seen stones, maybe you don't know much about crystals, maybe you don't know which crystals are which colors, but you're just drawn to color. You like blues, you like purples, you like greens. And so maybe you would say to me like, Sarah Ann, I, I love purple. Can you make me a mala with purple beads? Okay, awesome. And I will just say to you again, it's the same thing as if you see stones and you're drawn to them for whatever reason, because of the color, because of the look, because of the shine, whatever. This would be the same thing. If you have a draw to a particular color and you really want, you, know, you always wear blue, and so you really want your, um, your mala to be blue because you think it'll be so fabulous to wear with you know, everything you own because you always wear blue. Well, there is a reason for that. There is a reason that your body, that your being is wanting you to have something that's blue. And so in my opinion, you really can't go wrong <laughs> with how you pick your stones. And the third option, um, I have actually created a, a questionnaire. Um, there is, I think there's six questions on it. And, you know, they're just really questions to help me understand whatever you have going on in your life right now. Whatever might be coming up for you, you know, if you have a particular challenge or a particular struggle, if you're, if you have a particular goal that you want to accomplish within, you know, the next coming months or the next year, if you're, you know, really anything, whatever it is. And if you're open to sharing that with me, I have this beautiful, beautiful book. Thanks to my lovely friend, Cecilia, who owns the previous edition that I was using all the time. Um, and it pretty much has every stone imaginable in it. And then like some extra stones that these people have created themselves. And it gives a very extensive outline of really like what the healing properties of each stone are, what the spiritual connections to each stone is. And so there's actually even a, a an index in the back of the book that it gives um, spiritual meaning. So you can actually look up spiritual meanings and then it'll tell you which stones relate to those spiritual meanings. So you can then go and read about those stones. And there's a section that gives you physical physical health and physical ailments. So if you have a particular physical issue happening, whatever it is, I mean, it can be super minor to really, really extreme. Pretty much everything is listed in there. And so I can actually go to the book 
if you share with me that you have some physical um, issue happening that you really would like to heal or clear up or you're not sure what's going on or why it's still present but you really want to heal it I can actually go to my book and I can look up that physical ailment and it'll give me the list of all of the stones that have the healing properties for that physical ailment and so then I can then go usually I'm, I'm, it's, it varies, but usually there's anywhere between like five and eight stones, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, um, for each spiritual or physical ailment, I'll just call them ailments, and I can then go and read each one of those based on the other information that you pri provide to me, and I can really read the depth of that stone to to really see and understand which of those, you know, five to eight stones would really be the most beneficial for you to have. And so that's, that's how, like, when people are like, I just want you to make me a mala, and here's what's going on in my life, and here's this, and here's that, and here's this, like, you decide. You don't have to tell me anything. I don't care what colors. I don't care what stones. Like, I don't care anything. Like, you just, you pick it all out. You decide. Send it to me in the mail, and I want to be surprised. And I'm like, okay. And sometimes I'll have to ask follow-up questions just to make sure that I'm super clear, like, what their intention is and what's happening. Um, but I love that because then it really, it really gives me the opportunity to really go to that, to the book and really figure out like, okay, what is, what's really going on? Like what are the best combinations? Sometimes it really is just one stone. Sometimes it really is like this person needs this powerhouse stone. So I'm going to make the mala with just this one stone. And sometimes it needs that stone mainly with the assistance, a small assistance from another stone. And then I pick that. And it really, it really does just, it depends what you share with me and what I'm feeling, what I, what's coming up for me. And so I, I love that. <laughs> I love doing that. I love when people are like, you just decide. Um, and I also understand that for some people it's like, well, no, I don't want you to send me like red. I hate red. If you sent me a red mala, like I would never wear it because I hate red, right? So I totally, I totally respect that as well. Again, as I said earlier, there's really no wrong way. There really is no wrong way to, to pick which stones. Um, and so I also wanted to just share really quickly with you guys, I have a couple of raw stones here. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you guys because I think it's really cool to actually see the larger component of where these stones actually come from. So this is one of my favorite, favorite pieces. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. So this is um, malachite. So this is a raw specimen of malachite. And I'll just kind of share the different size of it. It's hard to really understand and see the beauty of this stone from, from my computer, but hopefully you guys are are kind of getting the drift with this. But so basically, they would take this raw specimen and then they make the round beads and the stones. And then that's what I use to then make your mala. And so malachite, I just learned this about malachite, which is obviously why I'm so drawn to it. But it's really a stone for embracing the divine feminine energy. And it's a leadership stone. It's about really embracing your power as a woman and being a leader and going into the world and rocking it, right? So I love it. I'm like, yes, more malachite. Fill my house with malachite. So I have to give a shout out to Cecilia because she let me borrow her lovely specimen of malachite. Um, and she is actually soon going to be opening up a store where she's actually going to be selling raw specimens. And if you want to check out her, 
like more pictures, if you didn't really get a good look from this video, you can go to her website and check out the pictures that she has of the raw specimens to see what she all has and also to just really get an idea of where these beads are coming from, like what they're really looking like in nature when they're found and then created into the stones that I use, into the beads that I use to create your mala. So Cecilia, if you wouldn't mind typing um typing out the link to your website so that if people have an interest, if they want to go to it, they're able to click on it and check it out. I know it's stonerelish.com, but if you want to just type it in there. Um, so thank you, Cecilia, for letting me borrow your beautiful piece of malachite. Um, and I also wanted to just share this last piece. This is a piece of um, Amazonite and that's what my mala is made out of and so it's just interesting because you know this is such a raw specimen of it and it looks similar but really it's almost like you look at this and then you look at my mala and you're like wait those beads came from that because it can look really different sometimes they don't look as different but sometimes they look really different when they're raw versus made into your stones into your beads um, so the last thing I wanted to cover with you guys is how do I wear my mala, right? So there's like, again, there's really no wrong way. You really can't screw it up. Um, so for me, sometimes I will wear my mala like this. You guys can see me, but I'll wear it as a necklace and I have it wrapped around my neck twice. Or you could just put it around your neck one time and wear it long. Or you can wear it as a bracelet. Or Havelin just shared with me, she wears it as an anklet. I'm like, I love that. Can you please send me a picture? <laughs> so, of course, she would wear it as an anklet. I'm like, I didn't even think about that. So, how I wear mine most of the time is as a bracelet. And this is how I put it on. I'll put my camera down so you guys can see it. So I typically will put the tassel, can you guys see? I typically will put the tassel on my forearm like that. And I do this for two reasons. One, I put the tassel under all the beads so that it doesn't dangle in my food or, you know, the dogs lick it or, you know, who knows what can happen to it and then it gets really gross. Um, and if you put it on against your skin and you wrap your beads around it, it is the closest it can be to your heart. And so then I will just wrap the beads around like that. You guys can see that as many times as it will go. And then there. And I have it on my wrist. So and you, you really don't have to worry about breaking it, about, you know, the cord that I use um, to knot the beads is very sturdy. And it does have a little bit of give and a little bit of a stretch. So over time, your beads will definitely stretch out. The string will definitely stretch. Um, and, you know, again, you don't have to worry about breaking it. And it will go, you know, you can pull it a little bit without worrying and put it around. And if it has a little extra, just adds a little coolness to it. Um, hey, hey, Sarah, I'm going to oh. stop you for one second because uh, Dave asked, how do guys wear it? Yeah. So that's an excellent question, Dave. Thank you for asking. So I actually just sold two to guys. They both reached out to me on the same day. Very interesting. Um, they both wanted me to make them bracelets. I'm like, yeah, you're missing what happens here. So the guy that just came and picked his up, he's actually wearing it around his wrist as a bracelet because that's ultimately what he wanted. And I actually used smaller stones. So typically the stones that I use are eight millimeter. So for his, because he he didn't want, he was like really nervous that I was going to like make it look girly. I'm like, I'm not going to make it look girly, I promise. But 
I used six millimeter stones for his. So, and I did that for two reasons. One, um, it was more manly looking and it made it smaller. It made it shorter. So it went around his wrist three times. So basically it looked like he had three bracelets on, but he had one bracelet on. So typically the guys, Dave, will wear it as a bracelet around their wrist. You can also, because it was so much shorter and because the beads were smaller, he could, depending on what he had on, he could absolutely wear it around his neck. It would only fit around his neck one time because it was that much shorter. Um, you could totally do that. And, and it, because of the look of his, because it did look manly, um, I don't feel like it would look like he had a girl's necklace on or anything like that. Like it, it was very much looked like a piece for a guy. Um, Can I ask you, we have another question that's sort of related. Uh -huh. I just didn't want you to, to skip over. Patricia asked, uh, do you use a stretchy string when you make a mala or some other thread? Yes. Great question, Patricia. So the string that I use is, it's actually called bead cord. So it's actual thread. It, it, it's very, um, the feel of it and the consistency and the material is actual thread material, but it's 100% it's silk and it stretches. There is give and it does stretch. Now, it's not gonna stretch like, sometimes you can buy bracelets that are on the, the um, that clear, like it almost looks like fishing line, like stretchy fishing line. And you know, they stretch, it's pretty sturdy material and it stretches pretty far. So you can stretch it to fit over. Um, this is very different than that. It doesn't stretch like that, but there is give into it. It will definitely, your, your mala will definitely stretch out. So if you, if you get it and you can only wrap it around your wrist, you know, four times and maybe there's a little bit extra, the more you use it and the more you wear it, it will gradually stretch out and you will very much so be able to um, put it around your wrist one more time for sure. It will just take a little bit of time. And the very first one that I made, which is the one that I wear all the time, I did not, I was not conscious about tying the beads really tight, like tying all the knots. So there's knots, individual knots in between each bead. And I wasn't really conscious about tying them really tight because I was so afraid I was going to break it, which you can't do. Um, but because of that, it's, mine has stretched so much that, I mean, I can actually wrap it around my wrist six times and it's really stretched out. Like if I hang it next to someone else's, it's like that much longer. It's crazy. And it's, it's the same. It's just that stretched out. And because I didn't tie the knots very tight. So now when I make them, I really am very conscious about tying the knots really tight. So at first it will seem like I tied them too tight, but I promise you, you will thank me for doing that at a later time when your beads start to stretch out. Um, so does anybody else have any other questions? Well, I'm just going to kind of go back up here so they don't get uh, lost. Okay. Uh, if you can read that, Car what Carmen had to say, and then Cecilia responded if you want to sort of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh-huh. Yes, that is very true, Carmen. When, so... And I'm going to talk more about this in, in the next workshop that I do on July 26th. Um, but I always encourage people when they get a mala to set an intention with your mala. That's one of the questions that I actually ask on my questionnaire is what is your intention for this mala? Because whatever that is, then I will really focus on that as I'm making your mala so that 
not only are you setting that intention for your mala, but I'm also putting that energy into the mala when I make it, when I create it, when I'm designing how I'm going to arrange the beads, when I'm deciding what thread that I'm going to use, when I'm just, you know, when I'm putting the beads on the thread, when I'm knotting it. It's a very meditative process actually to make a mala. It's incredibly relaxing. So that's really important to me that you answer that question so that I have that information. And so that intention, if you choose to set an intention with your mala, is really infused, that energy of that intention is really infused into those beads, into your tool that you have. And so, you know, let's say that you set your intention to, I don't, I don't know, make a, you know, make a life change to make a career change, right? You want to, you want to make a career move. Okay. Awesome. Well, I can, I can say to you that when that happens or when your being is ready for that to happen, more than likely, your mala beads will break. And that reason is because that intention or the intention of the beads, the purpose of your mala has been fulfilled. You, the energy in your body no longer needs the energy from these beads to get you to where you wanted to go because you have accomplished or you have achieved your intention which then means that you now need a new mala for your new intention. Like it's, it's almost like you've outgrown your mala. It's almost comparable to like a snake shedding its skin, right? The snake outgrows it, sheds its skin, gets a new skin. That's exactly what's happening with your mala. You're growing, you're expanding, you're achieving, you're accomplishing you're being really aware of your intentions and you're getting there and now it's time you've you've outgrown that intention and it's time for a new one because as you know we're ever evolving and we're always setting new intentions for ourselves in our lives so it is not a bad thing when your mala beans break and because these are all individually knotted, even if your mala beads did break and if you wanted them to be re-strung or redone, the beads aren't going to like fly all over the place. Probably one, one knot will break. You may or may not lose one bead, but the rest of your beads will be saved. You can, there's a lot of options of what you can do if, if that should happen to you. So great, great comment question. Carmen. Um, yes, Carmen. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you can absolutely clear the energy. And I'm going to get into that in the, into the nitty gritty of that in my next workshop, which is going to be on July 26th. But basically the best way to clear your mala is to put it under the full moon, like put it outside under the full moon when the full moon is happening. But I'm going to explain more about that July 26. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, while I'm waiting to see if any other questions come in, I just want to let you all know that you all will have an email in your inbox from me. Um, and I am giving you guys a special deal for being on with me live tonight. And Everything is in that email if you so choose to have a mala um, handmade and custom designed by me. And as I said, there's a lot of different options and how you can do that. And the email that I have sent you guys has pretty much laid out step-by-step -step instructions. So if you have an interest, um, all of that information is there in your email waiting for you. And if you are not interested, that's awesome too. You can feel free to read the email, but um, do whatever you would like to do with it. And I'm also going to um, 
So I will send all of you guys the information for the next online workshop, which is going to be Wednesday, July 26th, the same time, 6.30. I'm going to do the same format. Um, and in that workshop, I'm going to answer um, how to set an intention with your mala and how to clear the energy of your mala. And also, what does it mean if and when your mala breaks? And what do you do then? So if you all want to join me then, it'll be the same, um, the same deal as this. I will have the link for you all to register. So that'll be in your email. And you all can come back and join me in two weeks to learn even more about malas. So unless there's any other questions um, we are done for this evening and I just want to thank you all so much for being here with me this is so much fun I hope you enjoyed it half as much as I did love you guys have a great evening thank you honey <laughs>